The name Citrin. Neo Citrin. So, Spectre. A very long awaited sequel to Skyfall. Possibly one of the most critically acclaimed Bond films in quite some time. Not only did it make a buttload of money, the most that a Bond film has ever made, but it had a great story with a great portrayal on Bond, a much deeper look into the guy. Also, it was probably the best looking Bond ever, and that's thanks to master cinephotographer Roger Deakins. So, what do you think the first thing I noticed about this movie was? It didn't get DOP'd by Roger Deakins. Now, I only say this, I'm gonna get this out of the way with first. When you see a film by Roger Deakins, especially a Bond film, Skyfall, it looks beautiful. How often can you say a Bond film has amazing look and cinematography to it? That's the first quib I have. Now, I'm only saying it because the cinematographer for this film, who is... He does all right. There's actually a lot of reminiscent sort of looks to The Dark Knight with the color scheme, night shoots, but he's no Roger Deakins. Anyway, on to the film itself. Spectre is a mixed bag. I'll give you a, a brief description, kind of like uh, an insinuation. You know when you have a really good drink, say whether it's a tea or a milkshake or a really good alcoholic beverage, like a good bourbon, you really like it, right? You thought it was great. When you have it the second time, it's okay, but it doesn't really have that flair. It doesn't really have that genuineness to it. That's Spectre. Spectre follows Bond basically on a solo one-man mission to act out something that M, previous M, left for him. And takes him on this trail of intrigue and deceit, ultimately leading to Spectre a organization who hasn't been heard of since they had to be written out ever so undignified like with when Roger Moore dropped Blofeld, Blofeld down the uh, chimney shaft of that, uh, what was it, that reactor bu building? So we haven't seen these guys for a long time. So a lot of people were very interested and of course obviously they thought who Christopher Waltz is I'm not gonna say it, it's so freaking obvious. Anyway, the thing that I will say I liked about this film is it didn't go over the top of the gadgetry. That was something that I was kind of worried about because I've been so set in this style with with this whole kind of, not more so realism, but less gadgetry, more character, more kind of development, more realistic sort of setting while well, as not being realistic. So when I thought there was going to be a lot of car chases and a lot of kind of gadgetry and the car was going to have effects and whatnot, I was like, ah, but it didn't, thankfully. The thing that did return from the old Bond films is the cheesiness. And when I say cheesiness, I mean basically when the villain reveals his entire plan to you. Now, the thing that we've had from Casino Royale through Quantum of Solace to Skyfall is this arc of a broken Bond. And it is built itself up, it is transformed, it is transfixed, and it is completed. Basically, Skyfall was its completion. So, what do we get in Spectre? We kind of get the remnants of it. John Logan and his writing crew do a great job of kind of setting up this new sort of avenue and sort of continuing on with the past of Bond, which was cool because that's something that has been very great about this series is that it's kept this continuity. It's had this over this resembling arc and there's a lot of nods to the old pieces of this story which were great but as the whole overall thing the problem okay the, you know the biggest issue that this film has is that its overall end goal is similar to that of Terminator Genesis I'm not fucking kidding it's like watching Terminator Genesis at least the overall plot outline. I couldn't freaking believe it until I saw it. That might just 
let you down a little bit. But as for Bond elements, what was good? The action scenes were all right. There's a car chase at the very beginning, near the beginning of the movie, which was sweet. It's like, oh, sweet. Let's get into this car chase. Except it's a bigger tease than that of Casino Royale. And at least Casino Royale had a great finish. This car chase in Spectre is terrible. I'm going to be downright honest. It was a bad car chase. But there's this really sweet scene with the uh, with this plane in the snow mountains and whatnot, and then there's also a very homage-like fight on a train, with, which is very reminiscent of from Russia with Love with the Bautista. Now this was my favorite part leading into this movie. You know anything can be said about the Bond films; they're going to be good action, they're going to have a great lead. Uh, but rarely do you ever see a wrestler in these movies, and they got the Bautista. And he doesn't really say anything in this movie, but every time he was in the scene, I was like, oh, yeah, come on. I don't know why. I just was fascinated with Batista because I thought his story arc was awful, and he was the most selfish wrestler I've ever seen. His story was awful, but I just, I don't know. I, I thought it was an hilarious joke, so the fact that he got to be in a movie, he honestly was my favorite part of this movie because... There's a fight scene between him and Bond, and you know how in the fight scenes where the bad guy is the one who reaches for the weapon out of desperation? When he's fighting Bond, Bond reaches for a weapon out of desperation. That's how much he's kicking his ass. That I like. The problem is that doesn't really illustrate into the rest of the movie, because all in all, this film is about Daniel Craig and Christopher Waltz and their connection. and. Every time you think it's going to be something interesting, it kind of turns back into an old cheesy stereotype of the old Roger Moore, Sean Connery films. And while those films work back in the day, they worked for what they were. Spectre is the... is a child of, as I said, these other films that set themselves in a much different universe. So when we see something trying to return to this universe of the past while still staying in this new one, it's kind of an odd mix. It doesn't really flow well. And it feels like this throughout the whole movie. You're really getting this kind of not finished, not really sentimented song. It's kind of like, it's like the song. The song for this film, the one by Sam Smith, is all right, but it's not great. It never rises to a huge precipice. The song's always staying in this constant momentum, but it never gets that like the sky full. I'm just using that as an example. Saying, well, the golden night. You know, we don't get that with this song, and we don't get that with this film. We get all these parts where, say, on the climactic meter of a film, we just keep on reaching just before the climax, but then it just drops down. Keeps on getting it, just drops down. Bad to get there, drops down. Admittedly, the film does pick up and get better past the halfway point. There is some... And I like the Bond girl in this film. I thought she was cool until they reduced her to a damsel in distress at the end. But the Spectre... I don't know if this is Craig's last, but I hope it's not because... Honestly, Skyfall was so good and Spectre's so alright. That is Spectre in a whole. It is all right. It is a good watch. You will have some fun with it, but you're going to roll your eyes. You're going to go, wow, this could have been better. And you're going to kind of not really remember it. You're just going to keep on thinking, man, why did they get Roger Deakins back? They got Sam Mendes back. Why not Roger Deakins? So in the end, my thought for Spectre is a 4 out of 7. I may have been harsh about it about this film for this review, but I'm just that's just my honest opinion. I think it could have been better. I think that we've seen better from and we have seen better from Sam Mendes and Daniel Craig. And I think we've seen better from this whole Bond series with the two with Daniel Craig. I still think Casino Royale is still my favorite one of the series. I'm not gonna lie, Casino Royale is still my favorite. Anyway, wondering what you guys think. Am I being too harsh on this film? Am I kind of overlooking something? Did you guys feel that that whole end climax wasn't super cheesy as hell? Also, did anyone else think that that obvious character <coughs> wasn't totally obviously evil? It's really obvious. Like, you use a story plot 
device that's been overused how many times in the last five years? Oh, and a final note, uh, I mentioned this in our video back, IKP, which is a machinima group that I used to work, work with years ago, we were pretty big sort of once. Anyway, they're coming back and they just did a Walking Ted episode, which is one of the characters that they used to do. And so, yeah, we're there and maybe me, I don't know. We're, we're hoping that we're gonna finish Lost Cause. So anyway, that's all for me, guys. I'll see you later.